everyone, my name is Becca and welcome to my channel. I am so very glad that you stopped by. We focus on all things middle grade literature here, specifically the first chapters of your favorite middle grade novels. I am super excited about today's read aloud because I have Lisa Phipps' new novel here and then boom. You may be familiar with her from her other novel, Starfish, which was a huge hit, phenomenal theme of body acceptance. It was a really great novel. And it was a novel in verse, which this one is as well. So I am super excited to uh, dive into this book with you. Um, because this is a novel in verse, we aren't going to be reading the first chapter. We are actually going to be reading the first 15 pages. All right, that being said, let's dive right on in. I'm going to start by reading the front and side cover to give you an idea of what this novel is going to be about. Joe is used to living on shaky ground. His mom leaves whenever she gets the itch. And now he and his grandmom have to have had to downsize and still can't keep up with the bills. But Joe takes comfort from comic book superheroes because they face a lot of, and then boom, moments where the odds are stacked against them and they somehow survive. But then an unimaginable boom strikes, leaving Joe to fend for himself. The electricity gets shut off, and with the arrival of summer vacation, school meals end. Lots of people care for Joe, but he's afraid of what might happen if he tells them what's going on. So he hides the truth, even from his best friends. Joe's never felt so alone, until he encounters a stray dog and her pups. Joe knows what it's like to be abandoned, so he takes them in. But how long can four hungry creatures survive on their own with a dwindling supply of food? Especially when the next big boom is about to storm in. Lisa Phipps has crafted a compelling story full of heartbreak and hope, starring a resilient kid who reminds us that everyone has a hero inside. Wow, that was a very loaded synopsis there. A lot is going to happen in this book, and I'm already really feeling a lot of empathy for Joe. All right, verse one, just like Superman. My name's Joseph Oak, and since an oak tree grows from an acorn nut, grandmom calls me a little nut. And if mom's around to hear it, she adds, I'm allergic to nuts. It isn't nice of mom to say that, but she's not known for saying or doing nice things. But I never thought she'd do what she did. I never thought a lot of things, like I'd be on the news and the whole wide world would end up find, finding out about the moment I flew, just like Superman. Verse two, origin story. I'm not a superhero, straight up not. I mean, yeah, sure, I flew like Superman once, but I don't have any special powers unless you count my ability to be invisible and to survive. I do have one thing in common with superheroes. I have an origin story. So does grandmom who's from England, mom who gets the itch, my best friends, Hakeem and Nick, Uncle Frankie, who's not really my uncle, and my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Swan. Each of us has an origin story, the story of how we became who we are. This is my story, and when you read it, I want you to remember something. When Superman, Superman summons every ounce of his strength to survive something others can't even imagine, He's the same person he was when he crumbled to his knees, left helpless by kryptonite. He's the same person he was when he was Clark Kent, just living day by day, invisible to the world. Superman's the sum of all his moments, and so am I. Why the world needs comic books. In comic books, superheroes use their powers to help others, 
defeat villains, and save themselves. Good triumphs over evil, giving you hope, something to believe in. Comic books remind you that even when horrible things happen, it can all work out in the end. And thens and boom. Every story, st every story boils down to and thens and booms. And thens and booms are all about the moments when something happens that changes everything. It could be bad and it could be good, but it's often not. So always pay attention to and thens and booms. Scratching an itch. I'm only allergic to one thing, poison ivy. I learned that the hard way one day when my basketball rolled into the woods. Leaves brushed across my face as I parted them like curtains to find the ball. When I woke up the next day, I looked like, well, pretend you need to blow up a big balloon and fill your cheeks full of air. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Now squint, that's what I looked like. But worse than how I looked was how I felt. An itch is the worst. And you can't stop thinking about it. And the more you try not to, the more you do. Plus, you just have to scratch it. But then the itch itches even more. It's almost impossible to live with an itch. Prepare for takeoff. My grampy was a pilot, and my grandmom says you can always tell when a pilot's preparing for takeoff. They start ticking boxes on a checklist, and the list is always the same. Tick, tick, tick. Mom's like a pilot when she gets the itch. That's what I call it when she gets restless and wants to take off. Her itch takeoff checklist goes like this. Stares out windows, sighs loudly a lot, swings like a pendulum from sad to mean and back again. Tick, tick, tick. Mom leaves for days, weeks, months. You never know when she'll take off or when she'll come back. But you know the takeoff's coming. Tick, tick, tick. Mom's first takeoff. The first time I remember mom taking off was on a sweaty, sticky summer day. We lived in the gingerbread house then, the color of graham crackers with a fancy white trim. It was old and didn't have air conditioning. Mom sighed as we sat on the porch swing, hoping for a cool breeze. She pumped her legs and the swing creak creaked as we rocked. My legs stuck straight out, too little to dangle down. As soon as I spied yellow wings with a black tiger stripes and a blue tail, I jumped down to chase. The Eastern tiger swallowtail and mom chased me. All I wanted was to hold the butterfly, but every time I got close to it, it took off. What on earth's wrong with you? Who tries to trap a butterfly? Mom yelled, picking me up, carrying me back to the porch and plopping me down on the swing. I flinched when the screen door banged as mom went inside the house. She came back out with her purse slung over one shoulder and her keys jingling, jangling. Where are you going? I go too, I yelled, scooting off the swing. She didn't even look at me. She just went straight to her car and got in. Slam, squeal, vroom, mom took off. I hopped onto my big wheel and pedaled down the sidewalk, trying to catch her, but my little legs just couldn't keep up. Make me choose. Mom wears a silk butterfly scarf all the time. She says she's a butterfly and butterflies are free. You should be able to go wherever you want, whenever you want, fly away, be free. But grandmom would say, but you're not a butterfly, Carly. You're a mom, you can't be both. Oh yeah, mom would answer. Then make me choose and watch what happens. 
pop. When I was little, I had a jack in the box. Music played as I turned the handle, and I never knew exactly when it was coming, but I knew the door would open with a loud pop, and the clown would be right there. The longer I turned the handle, the more nervous I got, waiting for that pop. That's what it's like after mom gets the itch and takes off. I never know when she'll pop back into my life. The longer I wait for her, the more nervous I get that she won't ever return. And yet, the more I fear her coming home. Onomatopoeia. Comic books are full of onomatopoeia. I can tell you a story about mom and me using only onomatopoeia. Grr, slap, ouch, shh. Onomatopoeias are words that sound just like what's actually happening. Oodles of doodles. I'm a doodler. I have a notebook full of doodles. Oodles of doodles. I doodle the infinity symbol a lot. It looks like the number eight on its side. When you draw it, the line loops and connects. So you end up not being able to tell where it all even started. But once it starts, it never ends. It goes on forever because it keeps repeating itself. Sometimes I don't even realize what's going on inside me till I start doodling and Whatever is in, was in me is out of me and right there on paper. I just doodled a circle that became a planet in a galaxy where grown-ups act like grown-ups and do what they're supposed to do over and over again. The world where I want to live. Power of a word. Grampy died before I was born, but Grandmom tells me so many stories about him, I feel like I know him. Grampy loved to fly. He was a U.S. Air Force pilot, and Grandma met him when she was stationed in, when he was stationed in England. He also loved restoring old cars. He bought this one called a Pacer for a few hundred bucks and spent tons of time tinkering with it. Grandma still drives it. The bottom part of the Pacer is like a regular car. The top part is round with lots of glass, kind of like you set an upside-down fish bowl on it. I call it the fishbowl. The name fishbowl is sort of a word doodle. It paints an image in your head, just like a doodle gives you an image on paper. Now, even if you've never seen a pacer, you can imagine what it looks like. From poor to poorer. Grandma said when Grampy was alive, they had enough money. But I only know what it's like to not have enough. Grandma and I managed to do okay, mostly, unless the fishbowl broke down or one of us got sick and needed medicine or the furnace stopped working, anything unexpected. Then we'd get way behind. We could usually count on catching up though when Grandma got her tax refund. Then all the bills got paid at once and for a change, once for a change and Sometimes we had enough left over to splurge some, to put extra food in the fridge, buy new shoes, and if we were lucky, winter coats. I didn't know what poorer than poor was until the mess with mom. All right, we're gonna stop there. That was my first time reading those first 15 pages right here with you and the heartache that I feel for Joe. I just cannot wait to read the rest of his story and, and see how he ends up. But it is very clear Joe is going to need to show a lot of resilience. If you enjoyed this first chapter of Friday Read Aloud, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, everyone, happy reading.